why don't we give her kind of like metallic leggings? Hey everybody, Bobby Chu here. I work on movies, I work on animation, I have my own Emmy winning TV show. And today I'm gonna to take you through the very, very beginning of this painting all the way to the end. And most importantly, I'm gonna tell you stuff that only the artist can tell you, the thought process behind the painting. Okay, here we go. I asked you in my last three word prompt illustration video, what should I paint today? Dr. Latte says, insect, steampunk. Sand. And if you want to participate in the next one, give me three words in the comments and I'll choose one within the first 24 hours of this video dropping and I'll make that my next prompt and make a video and illustration out of it. So first, do a little sketch, then start applying some color. That's pretty self-explanatory. I have a simple color scheme in mind. Nice warm orange sand with a cool sky. Something important to note is the specularity of the object how shiny is the thing because a lot of times that's what's going to distinguish what's painted as metal or shiny or something that might be sand now steampunk i love the idea of steampunk because it has such wonderful kind of designs decorations and all of this kind of like victorian kind of style We'll zoom in so everybody can see a little bit closer what's happening here because this is actually a really large painting one of the largest i've ever done so as you can see i've switched from the idea of a realistic beetle to actually making the beetle itself steampunk it's not alive it's a machine which means that i have to think about making it look like a beetle but also having the functionality of something mechanical which adds another layer of complexity to this challenge. Also, when thinking of materials, even if both materials are shiny, like leather and metal, you want to think about which one is actually shinier. Another important thing to think about is reflective light. This is on a very, very bright day in the desert. So of course, there's going to be a lot of reflective light bouncing off of the sand and up onto the insect vehicle. Right, so I want to make sure that I don't just add light to the areas that are pointing towards the sun, but I also add a reflective light for everything that's facing the sand. And because the light is bouncing off the ground and then lighting up the underside of the insect, the color of the ground will also affect the color of light that bounces and hits the undercarriage of that insect. Another thing to notice here is how sketchy and how plain those initial marks were. When you take a look at the unfinished areas, they are quite sketchy. And did I know what would actually be in those areas? No, I didn't. It was very gestural, just putting down a suggestion of what might be there with actually no specific thing in mind. That's okay, because what we do is we want to look into the scribbles and go, hmm, what could that be? And then through that process, you imagine and you start to detail things out. I find it really important to think about the right things in the right order. That can change everything. So in other words, you don't want to think about some little screws that attach one tiny piece with another tiny piece if you're just starting in the beginning of your painting, right? We want to think about the overall painting before we start thinking about little details. Doing steampunk, a lot of times you're dealing with all sorts of materials that are being used to create this one thing, this one outfit or vehicle or whatnot. So it's a really wonderful opportunity to show your knowledge with textures. So I have a whole bunch of different textures here and I want to add in a bit of a special lighting scheme as well. The idea is that this traveler is traveling through the desert, so of course has an umbrella to help shade her from the elements. So I made the umbrella really red. And of course, light penetrating through that umbrella is gonna create a shade of shadow that's highly affected by this red color. Casting a beautiful red shadow onto our explorer here. Then I'm thinking, uh, I don't really like the kind of bare legs there, especially in the desert. Why don't we give her kind of like metallic leggings? I'm thinking that it reflects the sun and it becomes not just part of her fashion, but also it's a practical thing for traveling through the desert. And then a little bit of fashion with some nice red shoes, some little rings on her fingers, 
It really is about the little tiny details. Everything counts. As I start to paint the metal that's holding up the umbrella, I just nick it with a little bit of red to show that there is that influence in the reflection of the metal as well from the uh, red umbrella. And then we just make the top of the beetle nice and cushiony, giving a bit of the feel of luxury. And then some adjustments into the environment on top of the character to really help bring them all in together. A lot of times that can be a very helpful thing to create some adjustments over top of your final piece that goes over all of the elements to give a bit of the same influence, whatever that might be, color, light, shadow, over top of everything. Some final details in the environment and we're all done. Do you have some ideas for some good prompts? Give me three words into the comments of this video and I will choose one of these sets of words to create into illustration for my next video. All right, everybody, take care and have a wonderful day.